I want to welcome everybody. Thank you for taking your time. I know how valuable it is. I want to introduce my demo team before we get started. I cannot do this without these guys behind me. They make it easy for me to do. So um, over here I have Scott Banavon. I mean, Scott Banavon. John Benvenuti. They get mixed up all the time at work. So I have John Benvenuti. John is from the uh, California. He's a technical advisor in California. I have Scott Markham from Virginia. And I have Scott Benavon over here. He's from South Florida. The demo team. First product, go ahead, John. We're going to talk about three different products today. We're going to talk about a self-leveler and why that's important. We're going to talk about a waterproofing membrane, and we're going to have a peel and stick membrane. What Scott is doing is he's, John is pouring out the leveler over here. That's your middle name. John's pouring the leveler out. Now, when you pour a leveler out, it's extremely important to pour into wet leveler. You, it's kind of like making pancakes. You don't want to pour on two sides of the pan and hope they run together. You're not going to get a perfectly round pancake. And then the other thing that's important, once the leveler's poured out, and with levelers, you can pump them, you can run them through pumps on bigger jobs, you can mix them in bigger barrels, but you want to use a gauge rate. This gauge rate controls how much product you're putting down on the floor. It is self-leveler, but it does not know that it needs to run across the building over there to the low spot. You've got to kind of guide it that way if that's where it needs to go. Using the gauge rate controls the amount of product you move these skis or these adjustments up or down, and that will determine how much product you put down. You go in and you pull it across the floor, so I'll show them. When you see the product plow up, that tells you you're putting down a controlled amount of product. Then the next thing you want to do, is use a smoother. Smoother is kind of like a big trowel, only it's on the end of a stick. On a side note, this skim coats finish on floors like there's no tomorrow. This is what I use a lot of times when I'm doing a final patch on underneath a sheet goods job or something where it really counts to be smooth. But this is a smoother, and what the smoother does is it takes out any imperfections that might be in there from you walking on the floor or you going ahead and putting that smoother, that gauge rake on there. This is a hard thing for some people to do because less is more. And sometimes you want to tend to keep touching it and pulling into it and touching it. You just need to touch it and walk away from it. It's okay. It'll be fine. If there's a little void or a little gap that gets left in there, you can fix it tomorrow with a patch. But the more you mess around with it, at some point, you're going to get yourself into trouble. The cement particles have it. Once they start to grow together, you're done. You can't make it smooth anymore. Right now, the reason that it can flow out, the cement particles are floating in water right now. And there's like a time-release coating around them. But once they absorb the water and they start to grow their spikes, you're done. It will not flow back out. So follow the instructions. You want to mix fast. If you're going to go ahead and do multiple pours, you need to have someone mixing while you're pouring. It's not a one-man operation. And you want to pour it next to what you just put down, push the product into the old product, and pull it back out. That way it blends together. Scott's going to show you a waterproof membrane. This waterproof membrane can be used interior, exterior, facades, pools, fountains, steam rooms. It's IATMO approved. It's approved as a pan liner. It's approved as a secondary waterproof membrane. It starts off aqua green. It dries dark green when it's done. That's how you know it's dry. It takes about 20 minutes between coats to cure out and dry. The two coat application, if it requires a flood test, it, in 12 hours you can do a flood test with this product. This product rolls on with a 3 8 inch nap roller. I want about a credit card thickness. You want to make sure everything is coated. If you don't see green, if you see backer board, or if you see concrete or plywood through there, guess what? You're not waterproofed. Water's kind of spooky because water will find the, the pinhole. Water will find the spot where you're not at. In the corners, you want to go ahead and brush the corners. It's not required to use a fabric, but if you do have a gap that you have to bridge, put a fabric in there. It's not going to hurt it. It can only help it. But it is a fabric. You don't re it's not required to use a fabric over plane. This does not go ahead and allow you to do a lousy job with your backer boards, by the way. You still need to tape those. You still need to seal up all those corners and seams. This goes over that, not in lieu of that. And it's a roll-on waterproof membrane and crack isolation membrane. Scott Markham back here. He has MoppaGuard 2, peel and stick membrane. Now this is crack isolation and sound deadening. All my sound numbers are printed on the roll. The roll is 225 square feet per roll. It also peels off and it's pre-split in the back, back here. So it's a very thin piece of plastic. You apply a primer, 
you lay down the rolls out on top of the, pr the primer, and once it's on there, it's still adjustable on top of the primer. But it's once you peel it off, that's when it goes ahead and grabs. You can roll it if you have a roller. You can push it down and smooth it down. Just make sure you have contact. Once I put the first roll of this product down up against the wall, snap a line and start installing tile. There's no waiting. If you've used membranes before, in the past they've been kind of like a wetsuit with a t-shirt attached to them. They're kind of floppy and they fold over and touch. This has more rigidity to it. This product was, de was helped, developed by a roof membrane company. They know a thing about membranes on roofs. And it's designed to be a lot more rigid. Um, a single person can handle about a 20-foot length roll without having help. Um, it, it goes down and rolls down. You can snap a line. It, um, it has the sound numbers on here, and the one thing, the advantage of this, is that you can, you can go ahead and glue this down with a polyurethane wood glue can go on top of that. Very few membranes will allow you to do a polyurethane glue on top of them. There's a lot of mixed media going on out there where they put wood floors down and marble or tile down. You don't have to change your membrane. So, yes, sir. Oh, good question. Is it vapor permeable? My favorite topic is water. Water is an amazing little creature. It comes in three forms, a liquid, a solid, and a gas. So in a, in a liquid form, it's the water coming out of your shower. In a solid form, it's a block of ice. In a gas, it's the steam generated by the hot water. Steam rises or falls. It's lighter than air. So the particulate of water in steam is way smaller than the particulate of water for waterproofing. It is not vapor. It is vapor permeable right now. Vapor can rise through it. It's not a vapor retarder. So vapor, a true vapor retarder is probably going to be an epoxy almost every time if you're going to have a true vapor retarder. So you, you need to make sure you don't have a vapor issue before you put that down. It will blow it up off the floor. Any questions? Any other questions? Yes, sir. You don't have to overlap them. It's an underlayment. No, you can just bump them right up next to each other because it's not a waterproofer. It's a, it's a crack isolation underlayment, so it's just like doing sheet goods. Just get close. If there's a little gap, it's okay. It's an underlayment. I don't want to see a, you know, a one-foot gap, but a quarter-inch, eighth-inch gap. It's, but the, the beauty of this product is it handles really nice. So, and I'm started off doing sheet goods. So for me, when I'm doing rows of this, the first one, I'll peel the inside layer first and set it, and then I'll jump to this row and peel that inside layer and make them touch and set it, then peel the back one and peel the back one and work my way that way across the room. You can go over them, but you still need to honor them. It can, be, it can be used as a band-aid, like where you go over top of that, but on the top, on the tile on top of there, I still need soft joints on both sides of that. It's not in lieu of anything. You don't want to ever go outside of the TCNA's recommendations. Good question. Any other questions? It's 2011. This is the year it starts to go back up that way. We've got the products to help you guys out with that. Stop by the booth. I want to thank everybody for their time. I know how valuable it is. I wish everybody good luck this year. Thank you very much for coming out.